nevertheless, man, we have a rich history, a proud history, and I thank God for that. All right. Today's subject, Eternal Echoes, how generosity shapes our destiny. We already know the word of the Lord is blessed. Who remembers block parties? I think that might be a Chicago thing or an urban thing, a block party. During a block party, they would shut down that block. If it Mayfield or Menard or Massasoit. That's West Side. <laughs> in Chicago. Who remember Block Party? Now, during a block party, I want you to go there with me for those who, who remember. I want you to go there with me. It's in the heart of the neighborhood. And you hear the laughter, you hear the kids playing. And then Mr. John, we'll just call him Mr. John for the sake of reference, pulls out the big barbecue grill. You know the one I'm talking about. The big barrel drum, the kind that Deacon Morris and Reverend Timo has. The big barrel grill, set it right in the middle of the block party. The sun is out. The weather is perfect. The bouncy houses are out. Community is out in full force. Who remembers that? That that those were the days, you all. And now, you know, Mr. Joe, Mr. John, you know, they're the anchor in the community because no one can get on the grill unless they went to the university of the grill master. You ain't getting on that grill. And truth be told, no one really wants you on that grill. If you ain't Mr. John, you know what I'm talking about. And the grilling is going on, the sides are being made, everything is going together, and the block party, you absolutely right, my brother, it brought communities together. You didn't have to pay, because everything was free. Mr. John, you know, giving you the nice slab of ribs or that burger or the dogs or the brats, whatever it is that you want, no charge. Because it was his way of giving back to say that I am part, you are part of this community. We are part of this community. Now, Mr. John just ain't filling bellies, you all. Mr. John is warming hearts, creating connections, bridging divides, and the grill becomes the gathering spot, a place where neighbors share stories, where laughter is exchanged, and where the unity of community is felt. Come on, y'all, don't leave me out. Who remembers the block parties? And when a new family would move into that neighborhood immediately, they felt connected as opposed to being isolated. Because Mr. John's barbecue was more than just a feat. I want you to think about it. It's an act of love, a symbol of community, and a beacon of generosity, mm. the microcosm of what I want to talk about here today, because it seems like that spirit of community, of giving, of fostering a safe place where laughter is exchanged, unity is felt, generosity is the catalyst that brings it all together. Are you hearing me today? Now, as we talk about eternal echoes, 
how generosity shapes our destiny. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I want you to understand how our offering, how our generosity, much like Mr. John's barbecue, serve as a spark. And a spark can light a bonfire. A bonfire of love, a bonfire of unity, a bonfire of a shared vision for a better tomorrow for our community here at Mars Hill. Anywhere, I'm talking about eternal echo. And how generosity shapes our destiny. And scripture gives us a great, a great example of this. It's woven all throughout. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 44 through 45, I wanna, I wanna pose a question before I read it. Where do our echoes reside? You know what an echo is. You know, when you clap your hands and that sound travels and it bounces off a hard surface and you hear the echo coming back. Our generosity can be the eternal echoes. And that's what I want to help you see. Look at, look at Acts chapter 2, verse, verse 44 and 45. It says, and all the believers met together in one place, kind of like what we're doing right now, digitally. What we did last week, physically and digitally, and what we're doing next week, physically and digitally. They met together in one place. They, they shared everything that they had. Look at what the text says. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those who are in need. Now I want you to think about something. The early church didn't see an act of generosity, an act of giving as a one-time event. No, their generosity Digital pastors, drop this in the comment section. Their generosity was a lifestyle. A continual echo of God's love that resonated throughout their community and across time when they shared what they had. They weren't just providing for their community immediate needs, but here's what they're doing. Come on, lean in. They're laying a foundation of generosity that shapes our destiny here on this day. You see, their actions expressed a shared vision of love, of unity, and setting a precedent for us to follow. Look at verse 44 and 45. They, they met together in one place, shared everything that they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those who are in need. So here's what I want you to gather from that. Here's what I want you to catch. See, when we give, our giving is more than just gifts. They're echoes. Just heard one. They're echoes of God's love. Did you catch that? And what they're doing are reverberating through the corridors of time because you are generous with your offerings, your service, your prayers, your commitment. It's sending echo waves. And somebody somewhere will be the be recipient or the beneficiary of your generosity. And when we 
decide that our giving is more than gifts, that we are actually echoing God's love, man, it, it, it just feels better. That's right, Petite, that generosity was continual because, see, experienced believers of God know this. It's not just about me. It's about the echoes of God's love that are reverberating through the corridors of time that I have the ability to be able to influence someone for Jesus. Are y'all hearing me on this today? Our giving is more than gifts. The echoes of God's love. Can I read a second passage to you, you all? I'm just going to walk through this. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7 says, You must decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. That's one thing I don't do. I don't pressure people. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Not only our giving is more than gifts. They're echoes of God's love. Here's the second point I want you to get. Our giving is not about the amount, but the heart. Come on, Clarence Edward, teach this. Walk them through this. I want you to think about this. See, 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 see. It's not about the amount, but the heart. And each beat resonates a rhythm of God's love. Junior, you are really walking the people through this right now. See, I want you to catch this. The struggle between worldly obligations and the spiritual essence of generosity is real. See, money without a direction will disappear. Did you catch that? So I have to command my dollars to go where I believe the dollars would do the most damage. Money without direction will disappear. So there's a struggle between worldly obligations and the essence of generosity. I want you to catch this now and think about it. The church is the only place that apologizes for asking for money asking for resources because we've been hammered. We've been talked about, criticized. Amazon doesn't apologize for sending you messages regarding Prime Day. Prime Day just passed and yes, I participated as well. They don't apologize. Macy's, through their text alerts, they don't apologize. But man, as soon as we send out a text alert, my God, folk, some folk just lose their mind. Thinking that we operate all of this just out of thin air. No, 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 no. Giving isn't about the amount, it's about the heart. See, when we give, not out of obligation, but out of a cheerful heart, each heart offering, now don't miss this, each offer, offering becomes a heartbeat of generosity. Mm. A rhythm that resonates with God's love, shaping our destiny and our community. Hear this, come on, lean in. Giving isn't just a about meeting a need. It's about alignment. Mm, teach this, Junior. It's about aligning ourselves with the narrative of love and compassion that has a lasting impact. And Junior, you really walking the family through this. Are y'all hearing me today? <laughs> See, our giving more than just gifts, but echoes of God's love coupled with, it isn't about the amount, but about 
the heart. I want to read to you Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. Watch this. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part, with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vat overflow with good wine. Here's the third principle that I want to share. Our giving isn't just about generosity. It's a divine echo mirroring God's boundless love. Let me break that down, my goodness. See, the Bible is clear about the principles of giving. It's not about the quantity, but the quality of our hearts. And when we give those gifts, those offerings, and then they turn into a divine echo, this reflection of God's boundless love. God said, giving. It begins to shape the pathway toward a destiny that is filled with blessings, with love, and a sense of community. Y'all don't believe me? I'm going to let the scriptures read it for you. Honor the Lord with the wealth and the best part of everything you have. Look at the condition. Then he will fill your barns with grain. Your vats will overflow. I'm going to say it again. When we give and we are generous, it's a pathway towards destiny that's filled with blessings. And it reflects God's heart. Man, I, I'm doing the best I can. Man, I got one praise up. Who praising with me today? That's Miss Adela. Y'all quiet over there. Y'all quiet. I got two praises. Thank you, Dara. I got two praises. I got three praises. Oh my God. They, 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 they're, they're popping up. I got a few praises. I got three praises. Who flowing with me today? Are y'all ready for this? Now, watch this. I want to read this passage. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verses 38, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, give and you will receive. Mm. It says, your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over, and pour it back into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. God, God, I love your word. I love your word. I love your word. Now, 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 now watch this. I want to pose a question. Digital pastors, help me out. Drop this in the comment section. What seeds are you planting? Because every contribution, remember, is a divine echo and planting seeds in the hope, in the garden of hope, waiting for God's abundance to flow. Now, now think about this. I want you to catch it. I want you to catch it in God's realm, in God's realm. Generosity isn't just an action. Mm. God, this is good. Generosity isn't just an action. It's the currency of his kingdom. Woo, I'm making myself happy. Opening the doors to endless blessings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give and you shall receive. I'm going I'm to walk through the text with you real good. It says, give and you will receive. Matter of fact, let me make this a little bigger so y'all could really see what I'm talking about because I don't want y'all to miss this. Give and you shall receive. 
Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. Now, I'm I'm not a fan, Daryl, man. I'm not a fan of wasting stuff. That's why my wife get on me. You know, I'm that guy. I ain't a hoarder. <laughs> I might be a pre-hoarder. <laughs> Come on, man. You know how me and I, man, man you, you know, we say, I, I, I might use that one day. And then one day turn into a year, and then a year, and then a month, and you know, pre-hoarder. Now watch this, watch this. See, 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 see. I don't believe in wasting stuff, because if you've been to the grocery store like I have been with my wife lately, I didn't know stuff cost this much. But my eyes are open now. <laughs> so... I don't think my kids understand the concept because in the garbage can, they'll pull a bag if they pull it and it's not full. I'm like, hold on, stuff costs too much now for you to be wasting. And if you're old school like me, that bag ain't full yet. Y'all know I'm getting ready to go with this. Because you can get a little bit more trash in that bag. Think about it. So we dump the garbage, you know, have one down here in the man cave. You know, we dump that bag and one in my office. We dump that bag, but it ain't full yet. Still some more space to receive more. So what do you do when you put it in there? You take both of these hands and we do what, Lyndon? What do we do? Press it down. Cause you can get some more trash in there, Connie. And then you dump the second uh -huh, trash from, 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 from the garbage can. And what do we do? Uh, uh. We push it down. Cause there's some more room in there. That ain't enough yet. Because Stuff costs too much for us to be wasting. So here's what we do. After we done pushed it down a couple of times, if you're like me, I pick that bad boy up and I, I shake it. Because I'm going to fill every space in that bag with trash. And then we put some more in there. We press it down until there's no more air in that bag. Then we can pull it out, close it, wrap the tie around it, tie it up, toss it in the trash. Well, somebody ain't caught where I'm getting ready to go. So let me go ahead and, and close this message out. God's been too good for you for you to miss out on yours. You walking away with a half empty bag. <laughs> Teach this thing, Clarence Edward. You're walking away leaving money on the table. Give and you shall receive. That's the condition. Your gift, it says, will return to you what? Full. But it won't return unto you full until you've done the first part. Give and you shall receive. You don't get any press down if you ain't given nothing. You don't get any shaking together if you ain't given nothing. You can't make room for more if you ain't given nothing. Amount you give will determine the amount that you get back. You're leaving money on the table. Somebody drop that in the comment section. You're leaving money on the table. All because of a principle. Generosity isn't just an action. It's the currency of his kingdom. My God, I love what you all are saying. Press down continuously shake it up ah! shake it up because God has more that he wants to give shake it up more that he wants to do shake it up in God's realm of generosity isn't just an action it's the currency of his kingdom Miss Adela old school with a yeah I push it down with my foot 
Y'all get it? And that's why I believe where we are here as a church, Mars Hill, man, God's doing some great things. And this is what I see. I see a, a community echoing with generosity, shaping a divine destiny filled with love, hope, and blessings pressed down, shaken together. Then put a Miss Idella foot on it so we can get some more in it. So here's what I want to challenge you. Let's repeat the generosity of the early church and shape our destiny. Can we do that? So here's what I want to challenge you with. Here's what I want to challenge you with. That's right. I God, I love what y'all saying. Karen, that's right, Karen. Leave money on it. Woo! That's what I should have called this sermon. I'm gonna preach this again somewhere. And I'm gonna say, don't leave money on the table. Don't leave money on the table. That's right, that's right. Shay, that's right. Now, now here's an immediate step that you can take today. An immediate step. Here's what I want you to do. Digital pastors, I'm about to lean on you hard right now. Here's what I want you to do. Number one, drop this in the comment section. I want you to reflect on your personal giving. Take some time today to reflect on your giving habits. Are you leaving money on the table? Reflect. And then I want you today to give something. Give something. Give something. And the reason I want you to give something, this is what it looks like, what pressed down, shaken together, looks like. We believe God has more for Mars Hill. I done put the Miss Idella foot on it. I done pressed it down with my foot so I can get more on this platform of Mars Hill anywhere. Because everything that you see are in-person gatherings cost money. Streaming at this level, and I know it's done in excellence. I ain't seen nothing else out there like it. <laughs> Costs money. What you're about to go through through our life groups and how we set up a system that saves you time and money, costs money. Simplicity costs. The master classes cost money. Text alerts, the breakdown newsletter, the podcast, our website, our app, you all, all of that costs money. And now as we are getting ready to narrow down our future home to a couple of potential locations, it costs money. So I want you to reflect, take some time today and reflect on your giving habits and see how they align with today's message and then give something. Give something. Because generosity is the currency of God's kingdom. My God, woo, what a message today. <laughs> Will you help today? <laughs> oh my God, I pray that you were helped today. I was helped, and I'm praying that you were helped. And what better way to pause right now? Just what I did right there, that little move right there costs <laughs> money. And so we've made it simple. We've made it easy to give at Mars Hill. And I want you to text MHGIVE to 33777, digital passes. Go ahead and drop that giving link in the comment section right now. 
our website, you can go to marshillchicago.org. Setting all of that up costs. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 6159, River Forest, Illinois, 60305. That's how we do it. And what I love about this so much, you all, you have an expectation right now as a member of Mars Hill, digitally or physically. You already know what you, I come to expect that it's all going to work. I know a uh, pastor is going to say something that blesses me, but yeah, of course, because I love my people. I love what I do, but we can't do this without you. Music.